Hi, welcome back to CS170. I'm just going to give you a quick uh, review on a couple of things that's been giving uh, people some problems. Uh, and also just go through <clears throat> a little bit about what we're going to do this week. So for this week, uh, we're in week 9. Uh, so we're going to be covering an introduction to spreadsheets. Um, and uh, you probably noticed the color coding here, right? So you can recall like this is part of exam one. And then you have all this stuff here uh, that's in like this kind of a light blue color, I guess. Uh, that's all essentially JavaScript. Uh, that's going to be what gets you into exam two. Uh, and then the last section will be uh, spreadsheets uh, and some privacy stuff, social implications of IT and whatnot. Uh, and that's this last section that will fold up into your final exam. So, um, you know, you can kind of see this and uh, take that in, but uh, I would just describe it as uh, broken up, the course is broken up for the exams in terms of the HTML, uh, JavaScript, uh, and then the uh, Excel. Um, so this is what we're covering for this week, chapter 13. Uh, you'll see like the assignments and stuff like that is kind of finishing up from the JavaScript side of things um, which will be covering the arrays and loops and whatnot um, <clears throat> and what I'm going to cover with this video maybe will help you a little bit on the uh, the arrays because there's been some questions with the extra credit uh, for the arrays so let me see if I can clarify that and also clarify a bit about the um, the other stuff with the variables. There were some challenges there. So here's what I have here. I broke it up into two parts. One is this part right here where we was like the last part of the arrays lecture which I suggested uh, for you to work on this and see if you can come up with a solution uh, as part of your extra credit. Um, so yeah, I've seen some of the solutions come in. They look very good, uh, and some of, some of them indicate that there's some problems. So uh, let me just kind of talk it through here. So basically, you see here these first two parts. Uh, basically, is testing the idea of you being able to initialize an array. Okay, and there's a couple ways to do it, but this one is one way to do it, which is uh, with the initializer list. Um, so here, you remember we declare the variables, right, and then case sensitive, the array, right, so new array, and then you put all the values that you're going to put into the array like this, right, open paren, close paren, and then all of the different values that you're going to initialize it with. So this one is days, <clears throat> so how many, what, what are the days of the week, so from Sunday through Saturday, and put them in quotes, obviously these are strings, put them all the way through, and then uh, for hours work, these are numbers, right? And you know, I just put in some random numbers here. Um, and the reason why I emphasize strings versus numbers here is because there's been a lot of confusion and a lot of issues um, with the assignments because people are mixing uh, the strings and numbers together. And you really have to be very clear uh, what's a number and what's a string. Uh, for the variables. Like I said, we haven't really done much with Boolean, but the Boolean is another type of variable that you should try to understand for, for JavaScript. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the other part here is they want you to create a function, find total pay, and then it's going to return the total pay for the week uh, based on this calculation where anything over 40 hours is time and a half. And then we're going to display your total pay and we're going to say which day uh, you work the most hours. Okay, uh, So that's what I did with this function here. Uh, so you have a function find total pay. Then you have, uh, I declared a variable hour sum and the max hours. And then I did all my processing within the for loop here. And then down here, I just created a button to call this function. Right, and then I called this function, find total pay, and remember the scoping for variables. So once you declare the variables, in this case they just happen to be arrays, but they're variables just like any other variables aside from that. Um, I have access to it from within the function here. Right, So this 
declared out here, I have access to the variables in here. So I can just go ahead and play with it. Now I declare these variables in here. These are local only to this function here. Uh, so that means if I tried to access it out here, I wouldn't be able to access it. Right? So just keep that in mind with the scoping of the variables. Um, and then here's the for loop. And what I did was I initialized it to zero because remember array, arrays, the bucket starts with zero. And then I said <clears throat> for i less than the length of the array. Right? So in this case, you know, this array you know is going to be seven elements. Uh, but when I say dot length here, it just kind of makes it flexible. You know, for some strange reason, if we add another day of the week or something, like this doesn't have to get changed, right? I'll just go in here and just add another day here. And then this is the incrementer, right? Uh, it didn't ask for this, but I just put this in here because uh, I number you email stuff uh, where you couldn't figure out where things were at, uh, what variables were getting in. And that's why I put in this alert, right? You do this alert. Uh, it helps you to debug things later on. Later on when you have a final product, you can take this out. But I put it in here. Uh, again, it's, it's good when you're having problems with your code. Uh, put in these things and you'll be able to see wh where your variables are going off here. And you know, when, you, when you're doing the exam, very good chance you're going to be doing things where you get a piece of code and you're going to trace the variable and what are the values for that variable all the way through the code. Okay. Uh, so just think of it in terms of that way, where you're not just looking at the final result. Look at the different variables and how those variables are changing each step of the process. Okay, I'm sure some of you had saw some of that with the quiz, where uh, we asked you what were the values of those variables uh, through the processing. So you're going to be asked to trace through code uh, and trace through these variables uh, as they go through. So that's why I put this alert here. Okay. Now one thing I put in here, I did an if statement and I said uh, if the particular bucket of hours worked is greater than max hours. Notice I initialized the max hours to zero. Uh, then I make that the new max hours. So if I cycle through the whole array, then basically whichever one is the highest hours will become max hours. Okay, And then our sum uh, this is a very common routine, uh, so as you work through, uh, you just keep on adding uh, to itself, and that becomes your hours sum, okay? And then you get total hours sum and max hours, okay? So let's uh, let's run that, and uh, just kind of wrap this around a little bit. All right, so here we go. I'm doing the alert, so it's Sunday, uh, Sunday. And I'm cycling through the days of the week here, right? And then I got a total hours of 56, okay? Which would be the sum of all of these guys here. And the max hours is 12, which eyeballing it, you can see the max hours is 12. Okay, so this solves what this is asking for, for the extra credit. So hopefully that's clear. You can take a look at this, you can pause this video, take a look at all of this and see if you understand what I just did here. Uh, with the processing. Okay? Now the other thing I did here at the bottom is just give you some example of like <clears throat> the strings and numbers interaction uh, and also the, the dot value, right? I think there's a lot of confusion and people mixing things up on this, right? So when I refer to something that's like these input types here, uh, you know, it has to be the dot value after it. If it's just a regular variable, it's you know, I just refer to the regular variable without the dot value after it. And you'll see this down here. See, numDays.value, right? And then I'm just doing an addition here. And I, you notice I didn't do anything with it. I just took it straight from uh, the input text, uh, numDays, right? And then I add it, and you'll see what happens when I do that, OK? Um, so I did a var add days equals this plus this right and you would expect something from that and then same thing here I just took a regular number and added to this and you'll see something from that and then I did something where I made sure it was processed as a number that, and I do that by putting this number around it each one of the elements 
All right, that's an important fact, which a lot of people kind of miss that part. Um, and then I just took these regular variables here without the dot values, but I cast them as numbers and strings. And I do that because um, when I do this var here, it's five, and then I put a quote around the five. That makes it a string. Okay, and then by doing that, what happens? Uh, so let's see what happens here. This is total day. I put in a 10 here. And look, because it was treated as a string, it basically took 10 plus 10 as if they were strings and concatenated them. And same thing with the 5 and the 10, right? So even though I put in a number, uh, 5, um, because I didn't do anything with the num days dot value, it still treats it as a string. That's why it's 5, 10, not 5 plus 10. Now I got 15, and I got the 15 because I specifically put numbers around them to treat them like numbers. Okay, and that's why it became 15. And you can see here, I initialized these at 5 and a string of 5, and I added them together, and you got 5 and 5, not 10. Right? If, I, if I made this like without the quotes here, and then this would be a number and this would be a number, then it would be 5 plus 5 would be 10. Okay, So hopefully this little bit of code here helps to demonstrate the differences between string and number and what happens, what the implications are. And hopefully you also see the difference between looking at variables, regular variables, versus like accessing uh, like these input types where you're going to have to put a dot value after it. Okay, uh, so hopefully this is something good for you to chew on. Thank you.